Others have asked me to say a word about Abuna. And though I don't like to speak on the podium, but I said to myself, how could I remain silent about our beloved father, Abuna Pshoi? There is so much to say about Abuna. It is hard to know where to start. I came to know Abuna when I came from Egypt. And I have spent the last 16 years or so under his care and guidance. I would like to take this time to highlight some of the characteristics and qualities that Abuna has engraved in our hearts. The first thing I want to talk about is Abuna's simplicity. Abuna was very simple himself and took pride in the simple things. Twelve years ago, he started his first chorus. And we were about 10 to 12 boys and girls together. Abuna would come every Saturday morning. And even though he was very sick at the time, he would teach us Al-Han. And although we were the lousiest chorus and we didn't sound too good, he was very proud of us. And he gave us great encouragement. He made us memorize one of the Psalms for Holy Week and encouraged each of us to sing it. This was very nerve-wracking for some of us, but he was always supportive. And now maybe half of those in the class have succeeded to start the main chorus that you hear during the, the major feasts of the church. Abuna was always lighthearted, and he always had jokes. You could never out-joke Abuna Pshoi. He always had a better comeback. He always liked to make fun of us, but we loved it because we know how much he loved us. We all know that Abuna didn't like to give sermons, but when he did, his sermons were strong and his words resonated deep in our hearts because he was such a loving father. Abuna always used to have the deacons give the sermons and then later on the fathers. But we all know that Abuna's strength was in him praying the liturgy. His voice and his talent in Al-Han during the Holy Liturgy has become a better sermon for all of us. His liturgies lifted up our heart in prayer. Many times during the week, during the weekly liturgy, Abuna would stop in the middle and cry, and sometimes he wouldn't be able to finish that part of the liturgy. And Abuna Machi'il would come and finish that part for him. But now we take comfort that Abuna is with our Lord, where there will be no more tears. He cared for his congregation and carried them in his heart and in his prayers. I remember Abuna taking confessions starting at 8, and he wouldn't get done until 12. And I'll be the last person coming in, and I would ask him, Abuna, should we reschedule? And even though he was tired, he never turned me down. Many times we look at Abuna's health and ask, what if Abuna was 100% and could be around us more often? And why did God allow Abuna to suffer through all these years? But Abuna answered us with a living verse. My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Many of you have seen me helping Abuna and staying close to him. In the beginning, I told Abuna, why don't you go in and walk on your own and I'll be right behind you. And he said, no, don't ever leave my hand. And that's why I was clinging to Abuna all the time, trying to, as much as possible to give him the assistance he needed to serve the liturgy. And although it may seem, it may have seemed like I was the one he was leaning on, the truth, the truth was that he was the one who was lifting me up. A blessing that I do not deserve. Abuna loved to serve his congregations through the liturgy. When his vision became weak, me and my friend Peshoy typed up the Gregorian liturgy in Arabic and Coptic in large fonts. We know Abuna's style during the liturgy and what parts he liked to say in Coptic and what parts he liked to say in Arabic. And we went to see him and he was so happy 
because he thought he wouldn't be able to pray the liturgy otherwise. He wanted to give us something, but the only thing that he had at the time was two old leather crosses that he used to wear. We couldn't have asked for anything more precious. Abuna was so simple and so giving to all his children. And during these years of physical hardship, and how Abuna may have appeared weak physically, yet we always saw strength in him. And he himself strengthened us through the hardships that we faced. He lived the psalm and said, that said, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord God has delivered him out of them all. He carried a lot of afflictions in his body, but he was very much in tune with the afflictions of others. I myself, whenever something was hurting me or bothering me, I felt bad to go tell him to tell Abuna to pray for me because I have a backache or my shoulder hurts. Because I knew the suffering that he was going through. And one time I was talking to Sonia about a problem I had with my shoulder and he and she and she mentioned it to him. And Abuna was quick to show compassion. And he said Salamtak and he grabbed my shoulder and kept making the sign of the cross on it. That really showed me that Abuna had something special and had grace from God to comfort those who are weak, even though he carried much afflictions in his body. He served through his sufferings. A year or two ago, Abuna was very sick and came to pray the Christmas liturgy. And he used to serve with Abuna Mikhail. Abuna Mikhail was also sick at the time and was feeling very nauseous that day because of his medication. Abuna Bshoi started the liturgy, but on top of everything, he had a bad stomach virus that day. And he told me to take him back to his room. When we got to his room, he laid down on the couch and told me, go tell Abuna Mikhail, he's on his own and I won't be able to continue the liturgy. So I went and told Abuna Mikhail, and deep down in my heart, I said we won't be able to finish this liturgy. But 20 minutes later, I saw Abuna Bshoi coming back strong and pushed himself to continue the liturgy. He was an example for all of us, not to surrender or become self-absorbed in our hardships, but to push on through and keep fighting. The last thing I want to say about Abuna is that he was very lowly in heart and very forgiving. One time he told me to go find Sonia, and so I went and looked for her and I couldn't find her. And I told him, I can't find her, Abuna. And he shouted at me and told me to go look somewhere else. And I said, oh, Abuna must be irritated about something. And I didn't get much, I didn't get affected much by it. A couple of hours later, he took me to the side and told me, listen, I hope you're not mad at me. I'm sorry if I shouted at you. And I was like, wow, Abuna saying sorry to me about something that wasn't even a big deal. Abuna did that with all his children. We have very good servants here in St. Mary's, but some of us can get a little tricky. And he would come and sit in the altar and he would say, go call so-and-so. And he would talk to them and communicate with them. And even though the conversations may have been a little heated, but he never let the difference in opinion affect the loving relationships he had with his children. He separated the two. He was wise to gain the hearts of even the most difficult ones. There are many stories and a lot of experience, and a lot of us experienced that has left a beautiful impression in our hearts. And now we see that the priest who didn't like to give sermons has become the best living sermon that one can ask for. We thank God for Abun Abshoi and that he brought him into our life. And now we stand here today with mixed feelings and emotions. One happy for him to be with our Savior, with the fellowship of his saints, and one troubled deeply and saddened about his departure from this world. And now we ask ourselves, how do we deal with these emotional storms within us? All the questions that we have about why, why now, and what if. And I find that the only way to comfort our hearts is to be silent and let God calm the storms within us, to comfort and to heal our hearts. To Sonia, Maya, and Monica, we are with you, we are your family, and you are ours. And we will mourn together, and we will heal together. 
there are many things that is left unsaid. But I would like to quote a sentence that the Pope said in one of his sermons during the time where the church was facing a lot of tribulation. And these sentences have become a great source of comfort in times like these. In Arabic he said, في ذهني كلام كثير أريد أن أقول لكم وفي قلبي كلام أكثر ولكن أفضل أن أصمد وأنا لكي يتكلم الله والله يسمع هذا الصمت ويدرك كل معاني وبكل ما نعاني In the translation, in my mind, there is a lot of words that I would like to say and in my heart, there is a lot more but I rather choose to be silent so that God may speak and the Lord will hear the silence and address all of its meanings and all that we are struggling through. May God speak comfort to us. May God speak words of comfort to us and grace in our hearts and repose the soul of our beloved Father Abu Nabshoi.